And thanks for staying with us. You're watching Dead Break. Now, let's take a look at the headlines making the papers from around the world this morning, beginning with our sister publication this day. It's leading with uh, what is described as horrific and bestial uh, beheading, of course, and the cannibalizing of two police officers by the uh, IPUB group. And the federal government says the action is unacceptable. This is as the Northern Elden Elders Forum kicks against Kano's release. And of course, uh, just uh, below the nameplates there, COVID-19, Omicron variant yet to be detected in Nigeria, says the federal government to issue travel guideline today. And above the nameplate for this day this morning, China pledges 1 billion additional COVID-19 vaccines for Nigeria. Other African countries, uh, the riders there, promises $10 billion investment in three years. Omicron variant outbreak, WHO bemoans poor alert system, says new pandemic accord needed. Aviation agencies vigilant await federal government's directive, that's in Nigeria. The NCDC haps on vaccination, adherence to protocols. The front page of this day. And uh, while China is making pledges, uh, the Nigerian Tribune is leading with the virus as well. COVID-19 Omicron variant. Federal government puts Nigerians on alert. Uh, Canada detects first cases from two travelers from Nigeria. Uh, right above that headline, uh, Kaduna State begins four-day work week format for civil servants. That's on page 25. Uh, here's another. States funding police, and that's according to the governor of Yakiti State, uh, Fire Me. Uh, uh, below uh, EFCC arrests 60 suspected Yahoo boys in Ogun State. And factional APC caretaker committee emerges in Abuja, fixes February 26 for convention. And the Nation newspaper this morning also leads with the new coronavirus, coronavirus variant, Omicron. Nigeria on alert, says the government. Results of samples sequencing expected today. Entry points on the watch and review travel guidelines to begin on Friday. More headlines of the nation's newspaper, APC PDP resume hostility ahead of 2023. IU gives reasons why the ruling party should not return and the APC says PDP is no alternative. Also, speculators sell hoarded dollars to cut losses, says the Bankers Committee. And above the nameplate of the nation newspaper this morning, officer nine others killed in custodial center attack and 252 inmates are missing. And uh, to the Punch newspaper this morning, a travel ban looms as Canada detects Nigeria linked cases. That's the front page of the Punch this morning. Uh, despite the federal government's revenue crunch, NRS, uh, that's uh, projected passport revenue, drops by 96%. That's the Nigerian Immigration Service. Just, uh, it's a busy front page for the punch this morning. On the international scene, uh, the Guardian newspaper raised to return to 500,000 UK jabs a day as Omicron concern grows. And the Daily Express, let's go for it, booster rollouts to save Christmas, as 11 known Omicron cases are now in Britain, and the NHS boss says super strain serves as a wake-up call. More headlines on the Daily Express, Ghislaine Maxwell on trial, the court has told that the socialite was abuser Epstein's partner in crime. Well, the eye is also leading with uh, boosters for every adult in UK to fight Omicron. NHS scrambling to offer a third job to extra 25 million people to slow variant. The Daily Mail now. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell trial, day one. Uh, Ghislaine Predator, who served up young girls to be abused. And uh, that's according to prosecutors. And for the press review, Emmanuel Bello joins us now from our offside studio. Emmanuel, good morning. Good to have you this morning. Now, all the papers, both uh, here in Nigeria and internationally, are focusing on the Omicron variant, which Nigeria has said is yet to be t detected here in the country. However, in Canada, they have three cases, and they say two of those um, people who have been detected with the Omicron virus actually traveled from Nigeria, Emmanuel. 
Good morning, Nkechi. Welcome back. Looking refreshed after the break. Uh, yes, I mean, Omicron is still here and it's the biggest story. It's, uh, everyone is talking about it. And uh, of course, uh, you can't escape that from the headlines. Uh, uh, and now Nigeria is saying that uh, we've not detected uh, any of that in the country. Uh, but uh, of course, more concerns around the issues and uh, also the issues of vaccines and vaccinations are still going to take center stage uh, as we, uh, uh, I mean, as we deal with this, uh, the crisis of Omicron. Uh, but of course, there are various angles, and uh, that's one of the angles that has been tackled with um, Canada tr tracing some of it to Nigerians who are there. But federal government saying that uh, we don't have a case of Omicron here. But this is a virus, and um, you, there's nothing you can do about the virus. It travels even if you have border closures and you have uh, those restrictions and you have those travel bans and all that. They virus does not actually respect boundaries or respect geographical boundaries. It flies, it travels uh, because movement has stayed on and um, uh, our proximity to the epicenter of this crisis, I mean, it's on the continent, uh, Botswana and South Africa and some other countries down there and we have relationship and everything. So yes, it's something that um, as a country we need to use the window period where we've not detected anything yet uh, to see what we can do to uh, protect uh, our people and of course, uh, uh, do everything to ensure that uh, Omicron does not become a Nigerian uh, story as well. Uh, but of course, we are showing solidarity with South Africa and with the countries that have been banned all over the world. And there are people who have wondered why we're taking such risk. But uh, yesterday, the president, uh, the, the federal government saying we're standing with South Africa. And um, so, yes, uh, Omicron is going to continue to be stories. And yes, uh, all sides are going to be monitoring to see uh, where this goes. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. Uh, we keep our fingers crossed, Emmanuel. Uh, but still on the front page of this day, it's, it's leading with a, a story on IPUB and uh, the federal government of Nigeria saying that uh, their action is unacceptable. It comes barely days, if not maybe a week. Uh, the, the president met with some Igbo leaders and, and, and did say he, he might consider the release. He says it's a tough ask, but he will think about it, the release of Nnamdi Kano, the leader. And this morning we are seeing the federal government condemning the actions of IPOP, saying it's unacceptable. What's going on here? Is it, has the president thought about it? Is he now reversing his decision? What, what is this all about? Well, this is almost like uh, a vicious circle and almost like, uh, you know, a horror story. You know, the more you try to find a solution to it, it's, uh, the problem is um, amorphous in nature, you know, almost as if it's intractable. You can't, you can't put your hands on it. Of course, the federal government, with some Igbo leaders, earlier last week, thinking of some form of political solution, and then these videos um, uh, emerges. And I don't know if you watch it, uh, this one, but I saw it. And it's just, th this day gave it the best description it can give. It, it's bestial, it's uh, almost a, a touch of cannibalism uh, to it because there was, there was fire burning and then you have these human heads and actually somebody playing with it. I, I, I've never seen anything as bizarre as that. I mean, and we've seen terrible things across the, 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 uh, the world and the country, uh, but this almost, you know, uh, takes the lead in, in those kind of videos. Very, very disturbing. And the federal government quickly weighing on it and actually identifying even those, uh, who, the victims and those who perpetrated it and all that. This, of course, will take those talks back, backwards. And uh, there are, you know, evil leaders who want to be, you know, who want to have uh, be the voice of reason in the whole of this and see, see whether we can uh, get some kind of political solution. But of course, uh, there are those who think that, look, the hard way is the only way. And um, from those videos, you can see how determined uh, these people are. I, I'm sure the federal government will begin to rethink its stand on those political solutions. And even the Northern Elders uh, Forum saying that, well, uh, it is things like this, videos like this, that suggest that some people don't want any, end, any solution, any closure to these issues, and that uh, they may have to extend further those conversations and those talk on how to deal with the crisis of even freeing Kano on one hand, and of course, achieving some of the things that, that uh, the agitators are, are calling for. Videos like this just take, take the whole uh, discussion backwards. You're right. Emmanuel. Uh, in the Nigerian Tribune, uh, this one says uh, Kaduna State begins four-day work week format for civil servants. Um, Kaduna stepping into the future before other parts of the country? Well, yeah. <laughs> 
And I think that's uh, something that is going to be interesting to see how uh, workers re uh, react to that. And it's a developing story. But you're right, it's new and it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, back to the future or stepping into the future and checking out to see how uh, this works out. I think it's an interesting uh, story that um, maybe uh, alongside with it is the issue of uh, workers' welfare and, of course, uh, efficiency by, uh, by, you know, uh, government trying to see what they can do uh, to make uh, that sector very effective. So I guess it's something that we should be looking at and see how radically to change uh, the, uh, those issues. And on the nation's newspaper, also leading with Omicron Corona, um, the new COVID-19 variant. I wanted to ask you, um, the WHO general has said that South Africa, Botswana, the countries that first detected and reported Omicron should be condemned commended, I mean, rather than being penalized or stigmatized by actually coming forward to report these cases. You know, there was a rush in banning flights from South Africa. People who were flying from South Africa into other countries in transit. And when they landed, found out, oh, they don't know what to do with them. They had to stay at the airport for over five, six hours because everyone was confused. What do you think about that statement? Yeah, even before he, he made that call, the South African government said that, look, we have been punished for, for alerting the world about something. I mean, I uh, remember that part of the crisis of the Wuhan uh, variant of uh, the COVID was early detection and the fact that someone was hiding things. And Trump uh, suffered a defeat in the presidential poll because he was said to have, you know, he knew about the COVID crisis, but kept quiet for quite a while and the Democrats went after him with that for concealing, for keeping quiet, for not acting fast, for not doing something decisive. But yeah, South Africa was quick to point out and say, look, we've got this problem here and you know, they called it out immediately. But uh, from all indication, <laughs> maybe that action actually, uh, you know, was their undoing at, at, from what happened on the world stage, which has actually been condemned by, by everyone. Why punish, uh, why penalize uh, people that, uh, or a country that said, look, we have this problem. Uh, what such a country need is support, uh, you know, and not um, um, the kind of, you know, uh, the, the contemptuous disdain uh, or the suffering that uh, uh, the, the border closures and uh, also uh, the sort of penalties that uh, South Africa is going through. And that's why I think the federal government here in Nigeria jumped on it and said, look, we are supporting them. Uh, we have Chinese uh, government even saying that, look, we're going to support African countries with more vaccines. And some people say that that was a good call by, by the Chinese government and that that's what should be happening all over the world instead of restrictions and bans. Which there should be more support for uh, suffering nations and uh, nations that cannot access vaccines easily. Indeed, the punch is also leading with the Omicron variant, which you've spoken about extensively. But let's take another story here. You can almost miss it very briefly, Emmanuel. Electoral Act Amendment, we do have a development according to the punch. Uh, the president has now written the electoral body INEC seeking advice on direct primaries and other issues. Uh, it says the electoral body in Nigeria now has seven days to respond to the president's letter. Uh, good news, good step in the right direction, Emmanuel. Yeah, well, he did to take a decision fast because everyone is weighing on him. The governors are saying that, don't sign that thing, don't sign that thing. The governors are telling him that. Uh, but the labor unions and, of course, the National Assembly, everybody, seem to be, all the parties seem to be looking at it. And apart from the PDP that was kicking against it, uh, the APC saying that, look, sign this. But he needs more advice. He needs to check it very well. That's what the president should do. He, he's trying to get all the, issue, the views in so that he can be able to make informed judgment uh, on, on this. So, well, let's see what INEC has to say. The past INEC has said that, look, they have no problem with direct primaries. They're only concerned with the cost. So let's see what happens now after, you know, uh, he's, got, he's got all uh, the advice he could get on the matter. Thank you so much for joining us on the Press Preview.